What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rios and this is my crappy studio. <laughs> so I was browsing the app store today, just looking for apps to download and I noticed that one of my favorite apps that I use to edit my photos had a big update today. And that big update is that you can finally edit your video footage right from within the app using the same tools that you use to edit your pictures. So I'm gonna show you how that looks and why this is a huge deal if you edit video with LumaFusion. But first, let's play that $5 intro. Right, guys so I don't talk about this a lot but I'm mainly dedicated to the iPad Pro I've had plenty of opportunities to invest in a proper laptop and get some full desktop software but I just love the power of the iPad Pro I mean it's often been said that it's more powerful than laptops and I think the biggest thing that's limiting it or whether why it's not as powerful is the app I wish it had more pro apps and I believe that this one could be an extension for LumaFusion because right now I think we could all agree that if you edit on an iPad, you mainly use LumaFusion because there's at least 10 other good editing apps, but LumaFusion is by far the best one. Now I like it a lot, but there are still some key things about it that can't compete with full-size desktop software. To me, it's three things, but the biggest one for a lot of people is proper color grading tools. So now with this update with Darkroom, I really think that you can use this app to color grade your footage where then you can then import it into LumaFusion. Because at the moment, the biggest things that people complain about with LumaFusion is in-body stabilization. Like, dear God, please do that. Above anything else, <laughs> update that Luma. So there's that. Color grading, maybe it's the little side stuff like mas proper masking, uh, speed ramping. But I'd say the two biggest ones, the two biggest ones that can make it pro level and compete with Final Cut Adobe is in-body stabilization and proper color grading tools. So with this update now, you can color grade your footage. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do a little picture in picture and show you how you do that, get it into LumaFusion. And if this works for you or you like how this looks, this is a game changer, man. Because right now for stabilization, we got two other apps. We got Emulsion, if I'm saying that right, and we got um, D-Shake. So for now, we're getting by on using those apps externally and then bringing them into LumaFusion. Now with color grading, I really think we can use this. So let's, I'm gonna hop in here. Really quick disclaimer, to use some of these premium features is what they call it, you do need a paid membership. I was fortunate enough to hop on the dark room whenever it was a one-time purchase of $9.99. I think it's my understanding now that it's a monthly subscription. So I'm not aware of the prices because I'm already, I already own the app. I, I'm a paid user. But if you do know them, leave a comment down on what the subscription is. All right, guys, so let's get started. We're going to open up dark room in our iPad. And right away, the new section that you're going to see is video. So this is going to show you all the video clips that are in your iPad. Uh, the one that I want to specifically edit is this one of myself. So this is from a vlog that I did earlier, and it was just on an iPhone. Um, so walking through the steps here on the right, the toolbar that you have here, the first one is frame and fit, or at least that's just what I related to frame and fit. Um, I, I don't think it's really useful here, in, but I would rather use frame and fit in LumaFusion than here. So moving on, this next one, this is kind of like their filters. I hate, to, I hate to use the word LUT because these were already here before for their photos. So we'll just say filters. If you wanted to do something quick, you could tap on one of these and you could even change the intensity here. So we're gonna go back to original. Next one here, this is the most common uh, tool set that almost every editor has. Uh, this is the basics. Brightness, contrast, highlights, shadows, that kind of stuff. Um, next one, these next two is what I feel what separates Darkroom from LumaFusion or any other app that can potentially edit video, which I think this is the only one right now. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Here we have the S-curve. You can do anything from black, red, green, and blue. And the next is kind of like kind of like a color picker. It's like a hue. You could change the hue, um, saturation, and luminance based on the color that you highlight and the graph shows which colors are very heavy in the clip. So I'm gonna change this back to as shot because some of those were already altered. So if I'm wanting to color grade this, normally I would start with the S curve. So, you know, a lot of this, forgive me, I don't know the proper acronym or lingo for it. I just mess with it until it does what I like on the image, which is what I advise with a lot of this stuff, man. Just do it, try it, stop researching and try to become an expert, just do it. You know, that's the best way to 
to learn. So moving all this stuff here. Again, don't know what this is called, but this is looking pretty good. All right, so if you tap on it, you'll see the before, and then this is the after. So, so far we kind of color corrected a little bit. Now we'll go over here to the, the main tool, and I usually lower down my highlights a little bit. Um, let's see, bring up the vibrance. Uh, that's right there. But I want to bring down the saturation a little bit. Because uh, usually when I bring up the vibrance, my skin tones come along with it, and then my skin looks really orange. So to combat that, I bring down saturation a bit. So this is really all I would do to this clip here. Next, I'll show you how to use this hue picker here. Let's say I want to fix my skin, right? I didn't want to, let's say I don't want to lower the saturation because that'll that affects the entire image, but I want to bring down my skin tone. I can do that here by going into the color of my skin, which is about yellow red, and then changing the saturation here. Now I'm only affecting the colors that are in that range, which is my skin color from this image. Also, if I wanted to change my skin a little bit more red, um, I would move it a little bit more this way, and then this way makes it look yellow, so move it a little bit that way. And then the luminance just means how bright you want that specific color. So if we bring it up, see that's bright and that's darker. So we're probably gonna leave that alone. I don't see a reason to move that. So that's before and this is after. So that's how you can fix like spot coloring if the color is in your image is in here. I don't think you can take like for example a pink and make something out of nothing. The color has to be present. Um, so I, now that I've fixed this, I think I'm going to go back into the color, uh, color palette here. On the bottom you'll notice two things. Again, this is not in LumaFusion. You can change the colors of the highlights as well as the shadows. This is kind of where you can put some color into it to give it a mood. I like cooler tones and I know there's a lot of blue in here so let's try and mess with that. Let's see if I can bring up the highlights and the blues in here and then a little bit on the shadows to kind of match it. So now, yeah, it looks like it is a more of a cooler tone but I think I can balance that out if I bring up the temperature, make it a little warmer. So that looks pretty good, taking iPhone footage that once looked like this and now making it like that. Now granted, I'm not the best color, I'm not the best colorist. I, in fact, I don't really think I'm that great at color grading. I'm barely at the beginning stages. So this maybe doesn't look impressive, but somebody who does know what they're doing, I'm sure these tools are gonna be really helpful because they're not in LumaFusion, so you can definitely take advantage of these tools in this app to make your image look good and then bring it in. So I'll show you how to do that now. Let's say you're happy with this image, or rather, let's say you have, let's go back here, let's say the rest of these clips, let's pretend those are your other clips from your short film or vlog. You can go in here and copy the edits that you've done here and paste them under other ones, assuming you got like the same white balance and exposures locked in, or rather it's in the same scene. If not, then you can go ahead and color whichever ones you want. Once you're done, you can batch and pick all of these at the same time and just export all at the same time. Now this window has a couple important uh, options here. The first one, we want to go to the GOG and choose the codec you want to export in. I have newer iOS devices, so I normally will always um, use H.265, which is HEVC. Uh, if you have an older one or maybe your just device doesn't uh, support it. H.264 is the conventional one, so you can just go with that. But you, you, I'm sure you'd want to pick 100% bitrate to retain as much of the bitrate as you can. Um, once you alter or make any kind of changes to the original clip, the bitrate's always going to lower, so I guess that will help you retain the most. Once you've chosen your codec and the highest bitrate possible, the next three options you have is modify, save copy, or export. Modify is pretty awesome because they save the metadata within that so you can come back and modify it again. So it's not permanent like it maybe is on the iOS app. In fact, actually I take that back. I don't think the iOS app is permanent either. But either way, let's say you just don't want to make create more room. Maybe you only have like a 64 gig iPad. Modify original is pretty cool because you can come back and make changes. Save a copy is what I always do because I find that, and I've tested all three of these. I've exported to LumaFusion, I've saved to the, I've saved a copy in a modified original. Saving a copy under H.265 tends to keep the most bitrate on the cloned clip. So if you're conscious of that, I would go that route. If you don't care, because again, if this is all going to Instagram or YouTube, 
it doesn't really matter. It's all going to get compressed and look the same, and people are going to be viewing it on the cell phone, so you can't tell the difference. Um, but you know, if, if that information mattered to you, uh, but that's it. That's it guys. So that's how you get it out. That's how you color grade in here uh, I like this a lot, you know I've accepted that LumaFusion doesn't have everything that I want in it as long as there's an app that supports it of What I'm trying to do that's fine. So again, we have the stabilization apps I feel like now finally we have a proper color grading uh, app for video Darkroom is so amazing man. I've been with them for a very long time. They've continuously released updates this is by far the most important one to me, and this has really solidified my decision in using them primarily for editing photos and now video. So if you have any questions pertaining to the app, you know, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm gonna try to put out more LumaFusion content because again, I'm all in. I am like 100% iPad Pro and I'm 100% LumaFusion. So anything that supports that app, I'm all in for it. So. We'll catch you guys in the next one and stay safe.